Hey, you're listening to the Riverdale Podcast. This is episode number 70. My name is Jonathan. Welcome to lovely Riverdale, USA. This is a weekly Archie Comics fan podcast. We update every Saturday morning and every week we break things down into four categories. The first category is the book of the week. That's the comic book I read this week. Sometimes it's a new comic book. Sometimes it's an old comic book, but it's always an Archie comic book. We move then to the news of the week. That's what happened in the world of Archie in the week since our last podcast. We move then to new releases. That's what came out this past Wednesday. What will be coming up this coming Wednesday from Archie Comics. And we're going to wrap up today with an email. There we go. An email from a listener about last week's show. That's what the show looks like this week. Get ready. Let's jump into the book of the week. This week's book of the week is Archie number 645. This is the Archie Giant Size Summer Special, Archie's Ultimate Guide to Summer Fun. I got the Fernando Ruiz cover with Archie in his uh, inner tube uh, flanked to either side by Veronica and Reggie and Betty and Jughead. It's a great, vibrant orange cover. Orange. It's vibrant yellow cover. It looks really great. There's also a variant cover by Tim Seeley. Be on the lookout for that one. I actually passed that one up for this one. A little more of a classic feel to it. When we get into the story, we are getting into the thing I was most excited about when this issue was announced and uh, coming up to this issue is this is the return of not only Tom DeFalco to Archie Comics. Uh, Tom wrote the Men of Riverdale story a couple years back, a few years back now, and also the uh, the Great Robin Hood story. He's done some uh, some shorter stories as well. Tom DeFalco is a classic Marvel Comics editor, a writer as well. I remember him as the editor of Marvel Comics when I was growing up and reading those. So he's a a, a, a big name for me and a, a very important person to the history of comics, for sure. And it's great to have him aboard on Archie and writing uh, fun stories like this one. The other thing I was super, super excited about for this issue is the return of Rex Lindsay on pencils for this issue. Rex Lindsay is synonymous with the name Jughead. He's been drawing Jughead stories since the the late 80s, to the best of my knowledge, up until the book's cancellation last year, last summer. So I think this is his, his only work since then for Archie. I'm not sure if we've seen any short stories from him. But in any event, it's been a while since we've seen his stuff, and it's always, always really nice to see his work. Continuing on with the credits here, we had uh, inks by Witch Kozlowski in this issue. Awesome. We got letters by Jack Morelli and colors by Digicore Studios. So the lead story, this is a extra size, three ninety nine issue. Lead story is Summer Days, D-A-Z-E. And it's a really simple premise, as a lot of great comic stories are. Certainly a lot of great humor, comic humorous stories are are simple concepts. The basic concept is that Archie and Jughead are trying to have a fun first day of summer. And Archie just just keeps uh, falling into these horrible situations. Now, what makes this compelling is, of course, we like Archie, we like Jughead, and uh, it's, it's humorous to see awful things happen to Archie Andrews. That's the, one of the best parts of the character, really, is that we root for him, and yet it's still funny when he gets stung by a lot of hornets. Um, but the great thing about how the story is set up is that it takes you to a lot of different set pieces. It takes you to the beach, to a picnic, to the lodge mansion. There's hang gliding, there's fireworks. There's lots of great stuff. So as you're Flipping through the pages, the the scenery is changing. Almost every page is a new, exciting thing going on, and uh, and great artwork and great detail by Rex Lindsay. It's also great, and I hope I'm not spoiling too much. It's great to see 
Rex Lindsay draw Kevin Keller. This may be the first time that we've seen that. That's really rad. He does a great Kevin Keller. He also draws a lot of the newer characters that he drew back with the uh, the New Kids story arc, I guess two or three years ago now. It's good to see those characters. It's a, it's a great issue. It's a great, fun summertime issue. My only real nitpick with the story would be that it, while it covers a lot of ground, I feel like it's a story that could have been told more succinctly. I think that this is a story that it would fit would fit really well into maybe an eight or a twelve page story, and to have it rolled out into a whole a whole book length adventure made it a little bit of a letdown when we got to the end, and there was a a classic Archie comics sort of end to it. I was hoping for something a little more exciting, but again, that's me, a jaded thirty one year old reading kids comics. Super fun issue. So that is the main part of the book, the Summer Days story in the front of the book. We get some great Dan DiCarlo pinups with some modern coloring on them. And often this is a real put-off for me, but these seem to really work with the modern coloring. Maybe that's a testament to the, the folks coloring them, or maybe it's a testament to Dan DiCarlo's art, or maybe it's a combination of the two. But that's super fun. And then we wrap up in the back with a couple of fun reprints. I'm assuming they're reprints from the Betty and Veronica Spectacular stuff that we got earlier in the decade. They are Dan Parent, written and drawn. Oh, and Colors. Look at that by Dan Parent on this first story. And those are fun stories as well. Uh, Admittedly, I went through them a little more quickly as I was much more excited about the stuff in the front of the book, but if what Victor Gorlick was talking about in his interview with CBR last week is true, and we are in fact moving Archie away from the crossovers and away from the celebrities and the multi-part stories, and we're getting into single contained issues or issues with a couple of shorter stories in it, this is a great, great place to start. Super excited about this week's Book of the Week, Archie number 645. In Archie news this week, a couple of pieces of news, cool stuff over at cbc.ca. This is CBC News. In their arts and entertainment blog, they uh, brought us some information about the Archie, Betty, or Veronica app. This was developed by Goji Games. This is a Canadian company, and it launched in Canada last week. And that's sort of, I guess it's in its sort of beta testing situation right now. It's going to be launched in America, and I believe internationally, on the 17th of July. So be on the lookout for that. Its launch in Canada last week, on its first day, put it in the top three in games on iTunes and in the top five of all apps in uh, Canada, Canadian iTunes sales or downloads. That's big. That's a lot of eyes on the classic Archie characters. And whether that's fans who are reading the comics, fans who are going to read the comics, fans who used to read the comics when they were young and are coming back, those those are cool things. I don't know if those are huge numbers, but it certainly is impressive for the launch of it. I'm excited to see what's going to happen when it does launch in America. I'm excited to play it. I think it's going to be a a great thing for Archie Comics, obviously. In other news this week, over at the NewYorkPost.com on their Parallel Worlds blog, we got, in celebration of 20 years of Sonic the Hedgehog comics, we got the 20 greatest moments in Sonic comics. You'll definitely want to check that out. And how cool and exciting is that, that this week we got the 250th issue of Sonic the Hedgehog. This is something that I I didn't want to pass up. I was excited to talk about Archie 645 this week, and I read Sonic 250. It was great. It was part of the, obviously part of the Worlds Collide crossover part nine. That's winding down. That's an exciting thing that's going on. 
But I wanted to take a moment and just appreciate the fact that a, any comic has reached 250 issues in the modern climate, the modern publishing climate, certainly the modern comic book climate. That's a really big deal. The fact that it is a licensed comic is, is amazing. The fact that it's a, a property that is outside of comics that is licensed to make a comic is a really, really notable thing. And when I, when I look at... I, I've been reading a lot lately of the Archie Adventure series and just looking back on those things back in the early 90s when I was young. Things, of course, like Zen the Intergalactic Ninja, which I talked to Steve Stern about uh, a month or so ago, and the Ninja Turtle comics that were being made in that era. And uh, there are lots of other sort of experiments back then. There was the, uh, the Kushkins miniseries. There was uh, uh, Bayou Billy, uh, the, the Texas Cowboys of Moo Mesa. You know, these were all things that existed back then that do not exist now. And the fact that Sonic the Hedgehog was launched in 1993, that it's still going is a really, really special thing. It's really rad. And the fact that they were able to start it, you know, uh, b- based out of the uh, the animated series and things like that, and were able to take something that was very cartoony and maybe very simply rendered, very animated style rendered, and to make it what it is today, which is a, a very serious very exciting comic book that is steeped in a, a huge universe and a huge mythology is totally amazing. Not to mention the fact that with the archive collections and the the various reprints and the uh, the new Sonic Digest, they are still printing those early stories. They know they're not ashamed of where the character came from versus where the character is now. I think that's strong. I think it's rad, and uh, I want to congratulate everybody at Archie on getting to 250, year, 250 issues of Sonic the Hedgehog, 20 years of comics. That's rad. So that's your news for this week. we got great news about the downloads of the Archie game in Canada. We also got fun stuff with 250 issues of Sonic the Hedgehog. New releases. New releases for this past Wednesday, July the 3rd, are as follows. Of course, Archie number 645 for $3.99. Archie Double Digest number 241 for $3.99. And again, of course, Sonic the Hedgehog number 250 for $3.99. Also this week, pick this up. Super excited to dig into this. Legacy of the Crusaders trade paperback for $16.99. That is modern comics mixed with classic comics. You got to see it. It's like a it's like the best clip show you ever saw in a classic sitcom. Totally rad. Check that out. This coming Wednesday, July the 10th, we will get Archie and Friends Double Digest number 29 for $3.99. Jughead Double Digest number 194 for $3.99. Mega Man number 27 for $2.99. And the Archie Meets Glee trade paperback is coming out next week, the 10th. That will be $12.99. I am expecting that to be a big seller and a lot of fun. Also, finally, next week, we'll be getting Sonic uh, the Hedgehog Archives number 21 for 7.99 on the digital side of things looks like no new big digital exclusives for this week but last week we had three big digital exclusives drop after the episode was put up so uh head back to the Archie app head back to digital.archiecomics.com and do not miss Dilton's Doofy Inventions, the 100-page digital exclusive for $3.99. The Cheryl Blossom exclusive, 300 pages of great Cheryl Blossom stories for $7.99. And most exciting to me personally, Dilton, number one for $2.99. Haven't read this yet, 
very excited to check this out. This is written by Craig Boldman, who wrote... I mean, where do you start with <laughs> Craig Boldman? But uh, uh, notably, he wrote the Archie Daily Strip for years and years. He was writing the Jughead book most recently, the one that just ended last year. And what I found super exciting about Dilton number one is Bill Golier is drawing it. And I don't remember the last time we saw new Bill Golier art. His characters look great. I checked out the preview. It looks awesome. Excited to read that. But uh, that is exciting stuff. Those are your new releases for this past Wednesday, July the 3rd, this coming Wednesday, July the 10th, and your digital releases from last week from Archie Comics. Finally today, I wanted to get to an email I got from a listener. This is cool and fun information. Um, last week, if you listened, which I hope that you did, we talked about Archie's ham radio adventure. This was an old 80s comic book written by Bob Bowling and drawn by Stan Goldberg. Anyway, go back and check that episode out if you haven't heard it. It's a crazy old issue. But uh, in response to that, I got an email from Luke. Luke, who uh, is responsible for everything's Luke.blogspot.com. Great Archie Comics blog. He writes, Hey, Jonathan, great podcast as usual. I'm surprised that Bob Bowling wrote Archie's Ham Radio Adventure, and I guess I'll be adding that, uh, that one to my want list. Anyway, I wanted to confirm that the Feebly Twins and O.O. Wellenmelon are indeed Bob's creations. The twins date uh, from Bob's 80s Archie and Me run, while Wellenmelon is from the 60s Pals and Gals issues. Trying not to advertise, but if you head on over to my blog and look at those Archie and Me posts from last December, you can find some pictures of the twins, specifically in the issue 145 review. Keep up the great work, Luke. First of all, thanks for writing, Luke. Luke is a, a great champion of Archie Comics and a great historian of Archie Comics, too. He's writing a, a, a lot of great blogs. He's written a bunch. He's probably writing more in the future. And uh, go over and check out his blog. That's great. I had no idea about the Feebly Twins. I, uh, I, I am saying right now to anyone listening who works at Archie Comics, please bring back the Feebly Twins. I w <laughs> would love to see them. Now I'm wondering if they've shown up in other places this was the first that I had seen them. Now, O.O. Wellenmelon seems familiar to me. I don't know if I've read stuff that he's been in or not. I feel like it's certain. But now I feel like i got to go back and look at all of, like, Fernando Ruiz crowd scenes and see if there are Feebly Twins and Wellenmelons hanging out. If you've seen them in recent issues please let me know. I'm really, really interested in this now. And if you are from Archie Comics, as I said, uh, bring, bring these guys back. I'd love to see them. Especially, as I talked about earlier, if they're uh, drawing the focus back to, to short stories and to uh, the, the world of, of, of Riverdale proper, I think that uh, it would be fun to see some of these old characters pop up. So thanks, Luke, for writing. Uh, and I will, uh, I will go comb through my back issues looking for the Feebly Twins. <laughs> There's a great way to help out the show financially. If you're a big fan of the show, listen to the show every week for free. Head over to RiverdalePodcast.com. Click on any of the Amazon links for Amazon products. And if you purchase anything from Amazon.com after clicking on those links, whether it's books or movies or car parts or sandwiches or whatever you order from Amazon, after clicking that link, uh, a portion of what you buy a portion of what you spend will be sent over my way to help support the show and keep things running. I want to thank everybody who's been using the link and sending a little money my way. That's fantastic. And uh, thanks to everyone else for considering it and heading over that way. On the way out, I want to remind everyone to head over to RiverdalePodcast.com. There you'll see the terrific cover by Fernando Ruiz for Archie number 645. And if you scroll back in the post a little ways, you'll also see that great Tim Seeley cover as well. While you're there, you will find links to like the show on Facebook, follow the show on Twitter, 
Write us an email at riverdalepodcast at yahoo.com. You'll find a link to subscribe on iTunes, get new episodes delivered every single week. You can also listen on the Stitcher mobile app. Head over to stitcher.com for more information. New episodes are now being posted on YouTube, youtube.com slash Riverdale Podcast. If you've got a great idea for any video content you want to see, if you want to see my uh, my smiling face showing you some comics, let me know. I'm uh, I'm open to suggestions. I think that's everything this week. I'll let you know that we've got cool stuff coming up. Uh, stuff I can't announce yet, but cool stuff nonetheless. Stick around for that. I'm super excited about the podcast and about you guys listening. There are great things happening. Anyway, that is the episode this week. Again, my name is Jonathan, and I'll see you again next week here in lovely Riverdale, USA. Riverdale.